start out this build by sanding the wing panels. I'm using a drywall sanding block here, but a piece of sandpaper around 150 to 220 grit works great. What you're doing is trying to sand down the rough hard edges around the cut to make it soft to the touch. Once you've sanded down the foam, you can paint it with any paint you want. I just used a cheap rattle can for this since the foam is in fact solvent resistant. However, once you paint it, you are going to again need to sand down the aircraft. If you used masking tape, I recommend leaving it in place and simply sanding over top and that way the paint doesn't transfer into unpainted areas. To start the assembly, the first thing you need to do is cut out a battery bay. The battery is going to go all the way up against the front spars. Use your battery as a jig and placing the two center sections together, simply take a pen and trace out the battery. Then, with a knife, cut this all the way out. This will mean that you're going to have to strap the battery to the laminate once you laminate the airplane. However, this is the lowest drag method, and so long as you put three layers of laminate underneath the battery, it's more than strong enough to hold it in place. If you intend to race this airplane in the FPV WRA spec class, you must be sure that the dimensions fit the specification. The easiest way to do this is simply to dry fit the airplane and push it up against a wall nose first. Use a tape measure and verify that the wingspan is 36 inches plus or minus a half inch. If it's not, simply trim the edge if it's too wide. If it's too narrow, it will not meet spec. You'll also need to check the sweep. The sweep on this airplane should be 12 inches plus or minus one half an inch. By placing it up against a wall, take a tape measure and measure to the edge of the wing. Take the two measurements and divide them in half. If your number is between 11 and a half and 12, the airplane will meet spec. Since I am short in, on time and intend to race this airplane tomorrow, I need to build it fast. And for this, I'm simply using a hot glue gun rather than the old classic welder adhesive that I use on almost all of my airplanes. I'm using a good quality hot glue from Surebonder and not cheap stuff from Walmart. This gives a very, very good bond to the airplane into the EPP foam and holds just as strong as welder, but it adds a little bit more weight. All I'm doing is gluing the wing panels in place, making sure that my spar track is in a straight line. The spars in the airplane need to be cut to length. Run them all the way to the nose and then cut them approximately four to five inches short of the tip. In this video, I'm running them all the way to the tip and that's because I made an error. It is better to leave the tips a little bit loose and flimsy. The reason for this is they don't take a whole lot of stress and when you hit a gate or a flag or something, it will allow the airplane to flex rather than transferring the force down the frame. To glue them in place, I'm using hot glue, but welder or goop works just fine. Just add your glue to the track and then embed the spar. Do this on the top and the bottom side and let it dry before moving to the, on to the next step. The remaining parts of the spar should be put right behind the battery. That is maybe a, about an inch to half an inch behind the battery across the wingspan of the airplane. This is the point of the highest stress. Simply use a pen to draw across where the spars will meet in an A-frame, then use a knife, drag it through the foam, and then add glue. I'm using a hot work tool fashioned from a cheap soldering iron to make the track a little bit wider so the foam doesn't spread when I put the spar in place. However, this isn't necessary. This is just an added step that makes me feel more comfortable about my poor building skills. Again, you'll want to put this on both the top and the bottom sides of the airplane. Since I'm not the greatest pilot in the world, I intend to be crashing this plane a lot. And therefore, I'm putting stress spars in the back. You'll notice that I'm taking them from the center of the airplane out to just past the elevons. While this might seem a little bit odd, the reason for this is when the airplane crashes, the part that crashed stops, but the tips of the airplane are still moving and they will want to tear along the back side. The truth is the rear of the airplane usually takes more damage than the front. So what I'm doing is simply embedding a spar along the back end to keep this rip from happening. Although the truth is, Twice in the race, I crashed hard enough to wreck this spar completely out of the airplane. 
although on a bright note, it made it a lot easier to glue it right back together since the spar helped me align with the tear. Now you'll want to laminate the airplane. Lay a full sheet across the airplane and then using a hot iron or even a clothing iron, work it into the foam. If you haven't sanded down the airplane at this point, you should do so. It is not necessary to use fancy adhesives or anything to get the laminate to stick. Simply sand down the foam till it's soft and the laminate will stick to the EPP quite well. If you're using a standard iron, that is a clothing iron, the temperature should be about 200 or so degrees. Don't go too high or you could melt the EPP foam underneath and ruin the contour. You'll want to work fairly fast and you'll the opaque color of the laminate will start to go clear as the adhesive begins to bond. Make sure you get all areas and use a good amount of down pressure to be sure it's bonded. I like to start in the front of the airplane along the spar in the center and work my way to the outside. Once I've got the, front si the top side of the airplane fully laminated, I flip over the airplane and do the bottom. Before folding the bottom over, I'll need to cut and slice the laminate with a good sharp knife. I said good and sharp. This keeps the laminate from tearing. Use a utility knife or an X-Acto knife and get a fresh blade. Trust me, it will be well worth it. Trim off the edges as close as you can to the contour of the airplane. You'll notice that I'm wrapping the laminate around the back side of the airplane. Again, this is for the same reason that I included the stress bars in my build. When the airplane crashes, if the laminate is folded over, it will resist tearing much better than if the laminate was cut in a straight line. For added durability, I'm adding a two inch wide strip along the leading edge of the airplane. This is so when I hit a thin object like a tree branch or a multi-GP gate, it doesn't tear into the front end of the airplane. All I'm doing is keeping a nice contoured front edge. It also helps a little bit with center of gravity because most of the weight is in the front of the airplane. The Elevon stock included in the kit needs to be cut down to size. If you painted it, follow the same rhetoric. Sand, paint, sand, laminate. Once you cut it to sides, trimming off the edge, it will need to be laminated in place. The laminate works sort of like tape, as in a taped hinge, but it's much stronger. I typically laminate the, the elevons right over top of the bare wood and use that to attach to the aircraft. Simply hold them in tight to the beveled edge and then run laminate over the top. Then flip up the elevon and fold the laminate over the back side. Laminate that down and then complete the film all the way along the back edge and then under the bottom of the airplane. This will make a good, strong, live hinge. Install the servos by laying them over top of the airplane and then trace out with a pen. Once done, take a utility knife or other sharp blade and cut out around that area. If you have a hot work tool, you can use it to dig into the foam and pull the foam out. Otherwise, I would recommend simply just prying it out with a pair of pliers after hatching it into several smaller sections. Since I tend to be hard on servos, I'm using a Metal Gear servo and then I'm gluing it in with hot glue. The reason for this is that hot glue is easily dissolved by alcohol, specifically denatured alcohol, and thus it makes it much easier to get a damaged servo out of the airplane rather than having to cut around glue. You can also see I'm using a hot rework tool to cut down the line for the servo wire. The reason for this is just to make it a little bit easier to get in there. You don't have to cut this line, but it's better to bury the wires to reduce drag. It does not weaken the airframe at all. Control horns are set by placing them on top of the elevon nearest the hinge. Using a sharp tool or a drill, drill out the two holes in the control horn all the way down through the wooden base. Once done, take your screws, install them through the control horn, and then break off the back plate and tighten down the control horn. Once done, you'll make your control rod from two clevises and a section of fully threaded rod. Simply install the clevis in either the servo or the control horn, and then install the fully threaded rod. Use the other clevis as a guide to know where to cut, and then cut off the threaded rod, screw on the clevis, 
and make sure that your, your control hinge is approximately deflected 1 16th of an inch. To mount the motor, first secure the wooden plate to the foam motor mount. From here, use servo screws or some sort of wood screws to screw the motor into the plate. The motor will be used to set the center of gravity of the airplane. The center of gravity should be approximately seven inches back from the nose. Measure back along the bottom of the plane seven inches and make a mark. This will be the balance point of the airplane. Then install the battery up in the battery bay. Then, using a piece of tape to hold the motor mount in place, slowly move the motor mount forward until the plane balances on that mark that you just made. Once you've found the balance point, go ahead and make a mark where the motor mount is and cut it out so that the motor mount can slide forward and be glued in place. To cut this area out, use a sharp knife such as a utility knife to cut away the foam. You'll also note that you're likely going to have to cut away the foam in the back to make room for the propeller. The propeller should clear the airframe on all sides by at least a half of an inch. More than an inch is excessive, so anywhere from a half inch to three quarters of an inch should work just fine. Then using welder or goop, shoe goo, or even hot glue, glue the motor down in place. You'll want to put glue alongside of the motor mount as well. The winglets are simply glued to the side of the airplane. I found out the hard way that hot glue doesn't work very well, or at least once you crash the airplane once, they tend to pop off. So for this, I recommend goop, shoe goo, or welder rather than hot glue. You'll notice that I align the front tip with the front edge of the wing, and then stick the back out so the back of the airplane is along the curve. You do not want the winglet to stick out in front of the airplane. This will incur additional wag. I'm cutting the bays for the receiver, speed control, and video transmitter about a half of an inch behind the spar. I'm again using a hot rework tool as I find this easier. However, just like the servos, you can simply trace out the contour, then make a hatch of multiple checkerboards and pull them out with a pair of pliers. The camera is the last component to be installed. Some people make a nice mount out of TPU or PLA 3D printed plastic that fits nicely into the nose. Simply cut out that section of the nose and glue it into place, and you're all ready to fly.